Hello my friends and welcome to beautiful Boulder, Colorado and welcome to the very first episode of my new series called Running with Ryan where I'm going to go running with runners and have casual conversations. They're going to be fun and informative and yes I know it's a complete ripoff of the Kevin Nealon YouTube channel called Hiking with Kevin where he goes hiking with comedians. I thought that was such a great idea that I was just gonna steal it. So what do you think about all that? Lace up your shoes and put some band-aids on your nipples. We're going for a run. I am really excited about today's run. This guy is one of my biggest heroes in the world of running. He's super inspirational. He has set records all over the place. He won the Western States 100 seven times in a row. He won bad water through the deserts of Death Valley, the Spartathlon. He's probably even won some turkey trots along the way. Anyway, today we're gonna focus on one of his biggest accomplishments ever. In 2015, he ran the length of the Appalachian Trail. That's over 2,000 miles. He ran over 50 miles a day for 46 straight days. And we're gonna have so much fun talking about this. And he wasn't alone on that adventure. He was with his wife. She was his support crew. And she really was the MVP. And she's gonna join us today too. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready for Scott Jurek and Jenny Jurek and their two cute little kids. So this is Castle Black. <laughs> this is it. It's actually, it's it's not as glorious as it used to be because now we have two car seats. <laughs> two but car seats for these cuties. Oh yeah, I like your glasses. So this is where you slept for the Appalachian Trail. A little bit of sleep. It's like That's with the magic happened. <laughs> <laughs> the magic. I'm guessing there wasn't a whole lot of magic happening. As in AKA um, finding ticks. Finding ticks. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> awesome. Oh, look at the cute. See if I can do the transfer. Can you keep them sleeping? Please don't wake up. Please don't wake up. Oh. What is that for? This is a young jerk in the making. It's called Make It As Hard As Possible for Papa. Yeah. Build that trailer <laughs> full of heavy rocks for Dan. <laughs> Find a bigger one. Get a bigger one. Yeah. You ready to rock and roll? All right, do we lock can. this? We don't want anybody stealing Castle Black. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, let's go, team. Yeah, I make him push. I don't push. You don't push? I did a little bit. I mean, I did enough pushing to this. That's true, you did. <laughs> and That's... she carried them for how many months? So yeah, you did a lot of now work. Now it's like payback, so. Plus I need a little resistance. And my upper body's a little lacking. I've always read about this, that you would whoop and holler before races and stuff and make <laughs> like crazy noises. And I never raced you, I never got to experience this. So can we start this run with a little Scott Jurek whoop and holler? Uh, rebel yell. Yeah. So here here goes. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's all do it on the count I of three. Just woke up everybody. Like One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I'm a whooper and holler too. When I ride my bike and go through tunnels, I like oh, to yeah. sing the Ole song. Ole, 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 ole. You have a new book. It's been out for about a year. Hardback. The paperback's coming out, which I really appreciate because it's way easier to travel with. I love adventure stories. It was a true adventure in every sense of the word. And it wasn't just from your perspective. What I really enjoyed is that it was both of you writing back and forth about how the experience affected you. And I love that. Well, it would, it would have been boring if it was just, if he was like, oh, and then Jenny said this, Jenny said that, Jenny said this because we had two totally different experiences. So we kind of had to figure out how to tell both ends of the story. You know what I realized is that Jenny is a lot funnier than you, Scott. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you just realized that. <laughs> well, seriously, the, the humor really comes through in the book. And it's, and it's very easy when you're reading the book to know who's, whose point of view it's come from. Because when Jenny starts, Writing, you get a little like raven wing above it. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's really well done. Well, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to work together on it, like I said. And yeah, Jenny is funnier. And I think it's, it's hard too because Jenny, it's different personalities. And that's what's fun about the writing process. There are, the personalities should come through. We tried to be, well, we were as honest as possible. And sometimes that it's not always easy. Like Jenny is a little bit more, tells people how it is. 
And I'm too much of a Minnesota nice guy, I guess. There were parts of the book where you would stop and sign autographs and go running with people and hang out with everybody that came your way because you're so nice. And then Jenny was getting annoyed because she's like, dude, you're wasting so much time. We're trying to set a record here. Oh uh, yeah, totally. And Speed Goat was the same way. I mean, Speed Goat, he was just like, every stop should be like an aid station as if you were running like, you know, a 50K. And I get it, like it was, but I think that's what's interesting about journeys like that and adventures and even a through hike. It's your own experience. And some people do just want to like, boom, put their head down. And for me, I would always wanted to do the AT and a through hike, a long trail. I never did it when I was younger. Yeah. And so I really wanted to still have that feeling of rather than just a record and another kind of competitive outing, it still could combine some of those other aspects. Yeah. Because that was where the, I think the beauty and the magic was interacting with people, even though it was a little crazy at times. <laughs> no, to like, to, for me, I wasn't annoyed with the people so much as annoyed with Scott because he just wasn't taking it seriously. And I felt like- He's running 50 miles a day, that's pretty serious. <laughs> yeah, but, but he would just drag ass. his feet, drag his feet, talk to everybody, eat lunch. It was a little too casual. Let's rewind a little bit to before you did the AT. And Scott, you were at a time in your career where you were kind of unsure of what was next and you wanted something big to test yourself. And on a personal level, you guys were trying to start a family and it was it was difficult. You had some medical emergencies. Yeah. And this adventure from reading the book, it seems like was really hard for that reason because that's in the back of your mind the whole time and you want to start this family and you're trying to set this record and you know, it was just hard. Oh yeah, and trying to prove to my, not prove to myself, but you know, wanting to go back to those just really hard places. And like, do I want to suffer again? Like I, I used to <laughs> for so many years. And that's a hard thing when you're like staring middle age in the eye and wondering, you know, what what's next? And not that I needed to prove anything. It was more, I wanted to go back to those places, but I needed something that was gonna drive me to do that. And I wanted to share it with Jenny we ended up sharing it with a lot of people and it was yeah. like, that's what made the whole experience. So I think for me, it was very unique. It was probably the hardest thing I've ever done in sheer physical and mental capacities. But the other thing was, I think people, I like to think people do go to the hard places, go to the mountains, go to get away from maybe staring some of the problems or difficulties in life and just kind of get a new, fresh yeah. mindset. Totally. And that's really what it was all about. Is, yes, there was the record. Yes, there were things I wanted to do. But for Jenny and I as a couple, we were challenging our relationship and trying to seek some, I don't know, balance and recalibrating Yeah. with everything that was going on. I mean, Jenny almost bled to death. Like it was pretty full on. We're like, okay, maybe we aren't meant to have children or something. Mm -hmm. And Getting deeper into the book, as the reader, you start really feeling it. Like you do a great job of explaining how hard it is on your body and mentally. And you got to some points where you wanted to quit. This got you to the pain cave, man. <laughs> I mean, and then some, I knew, and I knew that. I knew it was gonna be one of the hardest. So it's probably a reason I saved things like the AT towards the end of my career or at the very end, because my buddy Horty, who comes up in the book a lot, he was always like, oh, wait till you're done with hundreds, you know, wait till you do all the fast stuff, you know, as if hundred milers are fast, but uh, it's, it's very true because I felt like I needed the wisdom. Like it would have been nice to have 20 year old legs some mornings for sure, but I needed that, that background and experience. And then also, yeah, I staring that, that trail down every day and getting out the van doors. Like, I mean, so many times I'm like, this is stupid. Why am I out here? But isn't that true with everything in life? I Absolutely. think like, there's so many times we're like, ah, let's just pull the plug. Why am I working on this project career? Or why am I, you know, working on this relationship? It's easier to kind of just hit the exit door and say, ah, I'm out of here. Yep. So that's the thing with the AT and having that record as an impetus 
and me going out there every day like, okay, this is what I gotta do, this is what I gotta get done. One of the very sweet things I thought about the book was that, you know, you were together for this experience, but you were apart a lot. But you always made like, you know, some couples have like a date night. You made time in the mornings to, to run together. I thought that was really cute. Yeah, we got to do that regularly for the first few weeks, but after a while, like sometimes it'd be evening and stuff like that, then it started just getting wasted away because Jenny was so involved, so many strategic and quick decisions need to be made Yeah, that we're just like, whoa, this isn't always gonna happen. And then Jenny, as we got further up the trail and more and more people came out, I mean, the only shift that was open where we could run together without telling 10 people at the trail, hey, you guys can't run. We're going on our six mile jaunt tonight, yeah. <laughs> this morning. There was really none of those except at the <laughs> graveyard shift. Yeah. So Denny did do a couple of those, but somebody needed to drive Castle Black around too. So we had to always make sure that. Well, he was always really good about making sure that this was my trip too, you know? Because a lot of people are like, oh, Ultra runners are selfish, blah, blah, blah. But he's always really thoughtful about my time and my space. Except when he was kind of out, too out of it to realize what he yeah. was doing to me. <laughs> yeah. the, the, like, the pain cave of pain caves are like just the, yeah, it was, yeah, it was next level. Well, yeah, I was following along real time and the photos that were popping out of you looked scary, man. You had lost a lot of weight. And I was like, oh my God, Scott. Yeah, oh, yeah. not sleeping, getting two, three hours, an hour here on a rock, two hours there. Like, it no, was our like- No, friends would always, like whenever I'd get cell service, I'd get light up and people were like, feed him, please. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm stuffing down 8,000 calories, no problem. Like. He was like, boy, man, you can eat, you can eat, boy, I couldn't eat on the AT, like. So I was just pumping down calories and everyone's like, oh, it's his vegan diet, you know. Yeah. That's what's, you know, causing him. But I think it was just this year, as the trail got worse, the rains in Vermont and all along the way, just made the trail so slow going. The days just became longer and longer. Yeah. And even though I was eating, I was just taxing my level, or my body at a level there's just no recuperation yeah. happening. What is kind of a takeaway for somebody who's probably never gonna run the Appalachian Trail or might not even run a 50 or 100 mile race? Like, what do you hope to, to motivate in people? I think the biggest thing for me and maybe for us was that you, you have to go to those hard places. It's good to self-select to do those things instead of being like, oh, we're forced now to deal with the demands of a family or we're forced to deal with a relationship change. I think purifying one's soul comes through doing something that you say, okay, I'm gonna do this and you don't have to do it, but it's chosen or elective. Like it just, you have to, you have to go and do some of those things because when you're staring, like, again, you can easily pull the plug. Yeah. Nobody was telling me, like, you gotta do this. And there were a lot of days where I'm like, this would be easier not to. <laughs> and I think that's when the real self-transformation happens. And, you know, pick something, like, for some people, it's getting off the couch for the first time, like, yeah. doing something with their body, or maybe it's a career or, or relationship or family goal that you're like, okay, I'm gonna dedicate time to this. I know it's gonna be hard, and I know I'm not gonna always wanna do it, but this is what I'm gonna do. Here's a softball question. What is your guys' favorite <laughs> vegan ice cream? I wanna know. Ooh, definitely Larry and Luna's Coconut Bliss. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's, and I'm a chocolate peanut butter guy, so like when Jenny could find that occasionally at like the random mega Walmart or something like that. She, uh, she, uh, what's that right? Oh yeah, you heard the choo-choo train. Oh, she, Raven hears the choo-choo train, <laughs> which is exciting. I still get excited when I hear the choo-choo train. <laughs> but when I was on the trail, like... People brought ice cream and he would wait till it melted and just drink it. <laughs> like a milkshake. Like it was just a milkshake. Like, yeah. And you know, five, 600 calories were 
like amazing. Like yeah. one group of runners came out and brought me popsicles and dry ice on the trail. I was just like, wow, <laughs> that was unreal. I love humanity. Yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. But yeah, the biggest thing was, yeah, pumping those calories in. Yeah. Oh, did you see prairie dogs? Oh, prairie dogs. Prairie dogs right? Let's go look at the prairie dogs. Let's look at the prairie dog. There they are. Look at them. Hi, guys. Hi, prairie dogs. Alan, Alan. Hey, hey, hey. Steve, 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 Steve. We do have a dead prairie dog on the road. Oh, it's so sad. Don't look, Raven, don't look. Oh, no, it got hit by a car, Raven. A lot of the world followed the adventure. They know what happened. It's like the Titanic. We know what happened at the end, but still reading the book was really gripping. And maybe you can talk about like, what's in there for readers who know the story? Well, that's awesome. I'm glad you feel like <laughs> you aren't just reading stuff you already knew. Yeah. But we did try to give the backstory and so much of it, especially at the end was everybody rallying and these communities in Maine and New Hampshire really coming together to support Scott and me and like lift us up and everybody just wanted him to succeed. And I feel like a lot of people would come out and they're like, I just wanted to be a part of it. Yeah. Like non-runners and the vegan community was amazing. They show up and bring so much food, but it was so awesome just to see how I think human nature is to help people succeed, you know? It, it was really like heartwarming, even though at the beginning I was like, no, <laughs> I want this to be our own thing. We couldn't have done it without the people to help. Yeah, and that's, that's, yeah, that's the nature of like endurance sports or ultra endurance sports. People think, oh, it's such these, these like just introverted, like people that just are, you know, selfish, social, yeah. selfish and running think, away from their problems. Yeah, running away or like <laughs> you, the, you ran into, you created <laughs> problems. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> well, that goes back to what I said earlier that like, I think it's good for people to create challenges or create like just like, I don't know if it's like adversity yeah. because yeah, sometimes you learn the most from that adversity you inflict on yourself. And I'm um, not saying like, yeah, be a mass, you know, masochist out there. Like yeah. having kids is kind of one of those things too. Where like we did this to ourselves, wait. <laughs> Why? 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 And then there's the moments where it's like, wow, that's amazing. And that's what the AT too, like we were just talking earlier, like, there were all those amazing things that happened and we wouldn't have gotten to those points if we had closed off. And yeah. so it's just a different type of experience. And I think that's, you know, a lesson too to learn is yeah, just be accepting of others and having to work with people. I mean, I left sometimes the trail at night with people I'd never met before. And Jenny and Tristan like, okay, here you go. <laughs> here's, you a <laughs> here's a pizza, here's a bunch of camping gear. Like, just take care of them, get to the other end. And I'd be like, what? I don't even know these people. And now they're like family. Like, yeah, and they're just like, we I don't know. trust them with their children. And there's lessons to be learned in that in terms of, you know, last minute changing the platoon. And instead of the A-team, the people you've been working with, yep. now you're gonna go into the battle with unknowns. and. It was amazing because yeah, Jenny said we met some like friends for life and just amazing souls. And I think that's the takeaway for us is that people are pretty damn amazing. Yeah, people are good. And you know, I've traveled the world. I've done a lot of adventures and you know, that is the best part is when you meet people, you make friends and it just fills, fills your heart with like warmth that, okay, this planet isn't as dangerous as the media makes it out to be. Oh, they're asleep. What I can't believe is that you were such a punk and brought bottles of champagne to Katahdin and smashed them all over the rocks. Why would you do that? <laughs> because he was in such the state, in a waking state to realize what he was doing. No. That was a joke, by the way. They did not do that. We didn't even know. You know, our friends who shall remain anonymous snuck them up, but. They did ask the rangers when they signed in, and they were like, oh yeah, just kind of keep on the down low. But you know, it was a beautiful summer weekend. There was a wedding on top. There was so much alcohol on the top of it. <laughs> Weed, like, 
There's every, a party. And it's not, it wasn't through hikers. It was actually just day hikers that love to go up Katahdin, whether they're from Maine or the surrounding area or across the country and enjoy a beer at the top. Like it was a real Mainer. Like I got offered two beers. I still have one of those in my fridge, a Baxter beer because people are like, oh, I want to offer you this. So it was so weird. I'm the only one with the consumption ticket. And like, and because of two sips of champagne, everybody had a sip of champagne that was up there that wanted one. Like, people who are part of different parties were drinking and the Rangers were posted up there all morning waiting and they had video on it. It's like, well, what about all the other people? you have on video <laughs> drinking but i was set up it was a setup all right let's get off the appalachian trail and let's talk about something kind of fun who are your favorite up and coming young ultra runners actually they don't have to be young this up and coming <laughs> anything <laughs> well i gotta say courtney to walter actually the first the first time i've met her like I, we just haven't crossed paths and she lives like what 15 miles from us here in golden and i finally met her last month and i just she's a fun personality she does things the way she wants to do them she's you know going back and forth from road track trail and I just kind of appreciate that because there's so much history in the road events that I learned to be involved with even though trails and mountains are my thing yeah so I I think she's really exciting and just kind of a fresh look I mean anybody anybody that wears shorts that should slow you down <laughs> yeah. is uh a fan of mine like people gave me a hard time for my long hair and my as they call them gypsy rings <laughs> to get rid of those so i'm like well she's doing her thing i definitely love claire gallagher yeah she's awesome and abby levine and abby mitchell and not just because they babysit my children but because <laughs> they're young and they use their platforms to educate about the environment and about you know health and training and I just feel like they're well-rounded. You know, I got into the ultra scene a few years ago after I went down to uh, the Copper Canyons and did the, Co the Caballo Blanco race, which is the, you know, the book that kind of like, like op exposed the world to you and your running. And I just fell in love with the people and the community. And for me, I'm, I'm not winning any races. Most ultra runners just do it just to do it and challenge themselves. And that's what I love about the sport. And that's, I think, that's why I'm still doing this sport today. Like, I never thought I was going to make any money. In fact, I lost money for so many years. I don't know where I'm breaking even, but um, that wasn't the point. It was like, I want to do this. This is my passion. And that's what I hope stays with the sport. There's some grumbling that the sport's changing. It's not as cool. You can't get into races. There's prize money. Who knows? Is there, you know, doping going on? But at the end, it's such a cool sport because of the people involved yeah. and the personalities and it's just, I don't know, I feel like every event or every group run, it's, it's kind of going to a concert and just hanging out with the, you know, people that you might not never hang out or ever hang out with. It's uh, such a cool atmosphere. Oh, it is such a fun atmosphere and it really is just like a party of just really good hearted people. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, it's the kind of party that your mom would be okay with. Like, okay, you can go hang out with those nerdy <laughs> ultra mom runners. probably there. <laughs> yeah, that's true, my mom's probably there. I'm a total mama's boy, you're mama's boy. Yeah. It's like 100%. <laughs> yeah, and you know, my mom has been to all my races ever since I was a kid. And yeah. Yeah. And that's what's great too is the family interaction. I mean, Jenny and I having a startup family, like we don't care if they ever compete in anything, but I just want them to do a bunch of different things and as long as they're out having fun outside, I think that's the coolest thing. And yeah, if they get involved in some activities or get to hang out with eclectic people as I like to say, <laughs> then we'll have exceeded on some level maybe. All right, so I say we finish thing, this interview off and then do some 100 meter sprints. <laughs> yeah, but sure. before, before we end it. I'll race you with the jogger. Yeah, exactly, that'd I'll be a good one. Take handicap. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you want viewers to know about upcoming events or the book, the book, the paperback comes out April 9th. Thanks, Jesus. I would love the book even if I didn't know who these people were. It's just, a, it's a really good adventure story. And like I said, it shows the best of humanity. Well, thank you. And I, for us too, we're, we're on this crazy kid adventure right now, but Jenny and I want to get back to the trail, get back to, you know, hanging out in Castle Black in a less than twin size bed. Um, <laughs> it's going to be pretty crowded with these two, but we're, uh, yeah, we're finally recovered 
mentally to maybe tackle something all together as a family. So yeah, we're there's still more adventures to be had. We're probably gonna be more of a bike packing family than a Ooh, I like that. My viewers will like that. We love bikes. <laughs> Start realizing carrying uh, 55 pounds in the backcountry, even if you are an ultralight backpacker like we are fast packers, you're still talking about some serious weight. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, I say we go on a bike pancake adventure. That's a great right. idea. It's Definitely. So we're, we're in. All right, good. All right, well, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Go buy Thank North you, on Paperbook April 9th or buy the hardback, whatever you want to buy, or the electronic one. Audio. Jenny and audio. I actually read the audio. So oh, really? Yeah, if you're into audiobooks you, and you don't mind uh, my voice, you can. Or my voice. Some people don't like my voice. <laughs> people don't like your voice? I mean, you know, a lot of people don't like that comedian Michelle Wolf's voice. It's like. <laughs> What can I say? Punks! Yeah. No. <laughs> I would like your voice anyway. Thank you. All right, yeah. Like and subscribe, and we will see you down the road for another episode of Running with Ryan.